So we're going to watch a, a few minutes of Disney's Pocahontas together here. And every little chunk of film, I'll stop and uh, drive you crazy with annoying, but really culturally insightful analysis. If you kill him, you'll have to kill me too. Daughter, stand back. I won't! I love him, father. All right, so there's the, the first big reveal, and, and it's a huge difference, right, between the early 1600s narrative and the Disney reimagination of it. There's no evidence from the time period that there was ever any kind of traditionally romantic relationship between Smith and Pocahontas. She was very young. There was a major age description. Uh, I'm sorry, discrepancy between them. But also, there's no evidence from anything Smith says or even any of his enemies say in the period that something like that happened. Anthropologists and historians are quite sure that wasn't the narrative. And yet here we are approximately 400 years later, and look how dramatically the story has changed. Look around you. This is where the path of hatred has brought us. This is the path I choose, Father. What will yours be? Oh, there's so much wonderful 90s stuff going on here. You know, when you think back in the original 1600 text, a lot of the things we just saw are there. Pocahontas is a gender hero. There is a really interesting commentary on Native American culture going on in the early Jamestown narratives. And we also obviously have major race uh, motifs and questions being explored in the early authentic uh, artifacts that we looked at for our last class discussion. So it's not as though these ideas, these cultural themes aren't in both texts, but Disney has brought them into the 90s. And so Pocahontas as a gender hero, as the heroic woman rescuing the man, has shifted from the very young daughter of a Native, a very powerful Native American king who was probably putting Smith through, through a carefully staged initiation ritual. That's at least what anthropologists and Native American studies experts seem to think. There's a shift from that to the 1990s gorgeous runway model Pocahontas, who is sort of a variation on lipstick feminism, who's strong and challenging her father and leading her tribe, but also, you know, still uh, gorgeous and uh, protecting the man she loves. So the, the shift from traditional subordination to ideals of 1990s female e equality isn't as radical as we might think. But that, that sort of traditionalism is pretty pretty typically Disney. Um, notice the association of Native Americans, Pocahontas and her father in particular with nature throughout uh, Pocahontas and that idealization of the spiritual relationship with nature, which is in Disney manifested through the magical leaves and the talking creatures and how in the film you'll see that that is connected to the Native Americans who are valorized as having a healthier relationship with nature than the greedy white men. And and while that's a positive stereotype, it's still a stereo, stereo, stereotype, right? And we want to remember that the Native Americans also had a, a, a link with nature that involved it as something to be consumed. They had to survive on it. Uh, they fought over it as a resource uh, in, among different tribes. So we just got to be careful of binaries that uh, position one group or another entirely in one set of values or another. And, and, but 
while we might want to be careful as students, Disney doesn't have to be. And as we look at Disney's rewrite, it's important for us to sort of see some of the moves that are being made here in terms of race, gender, and nature, among many other things. speaks with the wisdom beyond her years. We have all come here with anger in our hearts, but she comes with courage and understanding. From this day forward, there is to be more killing that will not start with me. Release him. I love Disney. <laughs> it, it's this wonderfully optimistic idea, right, that love conquers all. Uh, and then, of course, there's the villain. But what's interesting now about Pocahontas in the 90s is the villain is the angry white European, not the wise, loving, caring Native American uh chief and and that of course is a major shift from the 1600s to the 1990s i think it's also interesting here to note how um we dramatically we've shifted in terms of the pocahontas smith relationship right that that image See if we can catch it here on the screen. There we go. That's the the love romance image. That's the idea that the 90s film is built around, despite the fact that historically that's not accurate. And what we're going to be interested in trying to figure out is when does this move occur? Uh, when does this change occur? And of course, why? In this case, you've got this 90, 1990s agenda of racial reconciliation, of racial dialogue, and of course, of the uh, uh, embrace of Native American culture and the suggestion of the dignity of that culture, right? The desire in the 90s to celebrate Native American culture and to, in some degree, apologize, right, for the transgressions and aggression and appropriation of European culture. All right, enough of my blathering. It's time for you to spend time watching the movie and analyzing and thinking about it on your own, but hopefully I've given you a few tools here to apply. See you in Blackboard.